Hi, it's Lima Softwares. Today we are going to make a machine cover using the cathedral block. I'm going to give you the measurements that you need as well as a free pattern. So stick around. All right, so I have a free download for you guys. It is this, it's a two page instructions. It is from my girlfriend's quilt shop. I picked this up when I was visiting them for their shop tour and Rebecca uh, has given me permission to be able to use this for this. So it's a free pattern for you guys and it was made and created by my girlfriend's quilt shop. The link for that will be below. So what you're going to need by the way, let me show you up close. We are making this. It is really cute. It's basically like a mini quilt, but for your machine. So it will drape over, but it's just so cute. Okay, so I was wondering how, cause I'm like, I have four blocks right now. I'm like, it, like, it seems bulky, but you do join them. So that uh -huh. was. And you can clip the extra fabric out um, or just pressure seams open. It'll be a little bulk bulky, but not too bad. You're not gonna quilt it on I don't know, it's pre-quilted. It so. is. So you don't <laughs> have to worry really about is. that. Now, this is what gave me the inspiration for my last Maker's Monday with all the cathedral blocks. But now we're actually going to make a specific project and just use the basic block. So what you're gonna need for this is a charm pack of whatever you want. In this case, I'm gonna be using, it's called Better Basics Deluxe Cotton by Canvas Studio by it's a better text but it's all these gray and tan with the white on white print sorry not white on white but with a very light print this is probably the most noticeable out of all of them right there but my I'm just using grays and tan and then you're going to need a solid background. Now you can cut squares if you want, or you can find a charm pack for that. I'm also using a charm pack and this is going to be a light gray. And this is just some fabric I picked up. I couldn't tell you where, it didn't have a label on it. But I'm gonna put these two sets together. Just trying to show you what the contrast will look like. So that's the idea of what my cover will be looking like. But this is off of the packaging for the Better Basics. So, you are also going to need two buttons. And so I have these little storage containers. <laughs> and this has some large buttons in it. I honestly don't know if I have the color that I want. I'm gonna wait until I get to that point to figure out what I want. Obviously these are bright colors and I may go with it or I might look for something that's more in line with the, my fabric. But we're gonna make a really easy button fastener using a hairband, a hair tie. I love these. Again, I'm using my little containers. I use these all the time. And uh, notice this one doesn't have the little metal thing on it. This one right here, you can kind of see right here where the little joint is. I do have some that ended up with, hair, with the metal on it. More than likely you will fill it in your project, so try to avoid that, but it still can be used. Um, these are like Goody brand. So what you're gonna need is two of these, and I'm gonna wait till I get to that point to decide which one I'm gonna use. But basically, we will be sewing that joint right there into our seam and get a loop, and then that's our button loop. So, two buttons, two loops, two charm packs, you're also gonna need batting and backing for the size of your machine. We're gonna start out by figuring out how many squares we need. This is the machine I'm making a cover for. And as you can see, I have the lid up, all these little clips along the top, and I'm using a stand for my thread. And I have found, for me, it's easier to use the stand and this upper stand when I am using this machine, which means closing this lid is a lot of work. 
I have to take this off. I have to take these off. I don't want to rethread my machine. I don't want to deal with any of this. So when I make my cover, I'm going to take into account the height of the it with the lid open and the clips on there. Now over here on the side, it's going to close. It's going to um, have a button closure. So I'm pretty sure that this will be fine because it will be coming out the open side. But <laughs> I'm a fan blowing and it's wreaking havoc on the threads here because I don't usually have it sitting right like this. All right. Um, take our soft ruler measuring tape. We're going to measure from the top front to the bottom. This machine is using a so steady table. And so for me, I'm measuring from the table to the table. I have other machines without tables and I would actually go lower, but I'm not on this one. This is what I'm doing. Now I am going to get this flat and then I'm going to take into account this stuff. So there's like a high point and coming down and around and that's with no slack. I come up with 25 inches and I think a little, well, it won't hurt because it might be a little short. I still think 25 inches is a good, good measurement. So that's how you get that measurement. Now to get the other one, floor, <laughs> where's my jar? Uh, okay, to get the other one, measure the front like this, but I want to go out to measure this and I'm actually, actually, I'm going to start this in the middle because you have this middle seam going to the middle here and that puts me at 23 and a half and I'm going to go a little smaller because we're going to have a border on here. So I'm going to just make it at 23. It could probably even be a little smaller than that. I'm fine with this. So 23, 25 by 23. Now let's figure out our math. So we have 25 tall and 23, these are inches wide. So we're gonna go to our instructions, which by the way is a free download for you. This is a pattern from my girlfriend's quilt shop. They've given me permission to share it with you guys. So it says measure the length of your machine, which we did. I have 23 inches. Now it says divide the length by four. 23 divided by four is 5.75. And then it says to round up. And that's how many blocks we need in a row, which really means six. Then they give you an example. Okay, using a soft tape, measure top to back. And we did that, and that one is 25 inches tall. Divide the measurement over the machine by four. 25 divided by four is, let's see. <laughs> this is the number of rows you need. It is 6.25 and I'm gonna round up to seven. Multiply the number of rows by the number of blocks, and this is the number you need to make. So we've got six times seven equals 42. Now, I measured to the halfway point on my machine. If you measure just to the front, it actually is a different measurement. So let me go measure that. This number is actually 19 front only. Oops, not the tall number, this one. All right, so we're going to just do with the front measurement and, uh, to follow this pattern. Now this pattern has this really cute little border on it on the right and the left side only, not the top and bottom. Okay, and so it is actually taking this into account 
So what you need is 19 inches is the front of my, my machine. So if I go to 19, we're just going to write it up in the margin here. 19 divided by 4 equals 4.75. We're going to round it up to 5. Okay, and that's really a number that you want if you're going to include this cute little border on it. If you don't want the border, just use the original numbers we used. So, five rows, or five blocks wide, by seven rows. Oh my goodness. Equals 35. So we're actually gonna use this and add the border that's on here. So this is without border which honestly this is cuter <laughs> but it knows that that's exactly a charm pack so that would if your machine's the same size as mine you would use 42 squares um, we're actually still gonna use 42 squares but in a different way so we need to make 35 um, of the blocks and I'm going to show you how to do that um, but then we're going to t pull seven aside because we have seven rows, just seven squares, charm pack squares. So when you take seven plus 35, you still get your 42. So we need five blocks, still need seven rows because that border is only on the sides. And now we're going to make our cathedral window blocks using this. And it's telling me that I am going to need 35. 5 times 7 is 35. All right, let's build some blocks. My Maker's Monday video from last week went over a lot of different variations. I'm just going to show you the basic, which is what's used throughout this whole one. Easiest for me is to give all of them a crease. And if you fold it in, then it's easier to work with later. So I'm going to go through this whole stack and do that. I'm also going to do the same to this. Now, the solid is going to be my background piece, and that's all that we're going to be doing with that right now. But this piece, we need to fold everything up into quarters, following those lines and keeping them in the quadrant. The flatter you can get it, the better it will be, or easier for you, but main thing is you need a crease. Okay, so we're going to take this and this, pin it in place, but we're going to put the points right where the creases are so you can finger cre crease it if you want but this is why pressing on this is not going to matter because it's gone now I'm going to go to the machine and top stitch right where the crease is on this one and the reason I had you fold it in is because this is a valley and it's easier to sew in a valley than it is on a peak and then it's going to basically almost disappear anyway you're going to give it some pressings but that crease is not going to be as noticeable because it's going to look intentional so follow me to the machine. All right, you're gonna to wanna to pin this before you start sewing. It's gonna make life easier for you because it can move. At least try it for the first couple. I like to use my regular foot instead of my quarter inch foot because the quarter inch foot for this machine has that edge and it gets in my way because I don't need a quarter inch. I'm sewing through the middle of things. So I want the flat foot. If your quarter inch foot is flat, and doesn't get in the way, you don't need to change it. But it is something to think about. And then stopping a needle down 
is good if you have the capability. That was the floor. <laughs> that bottom thread is just hooked. That was the problem. The cool thing about this machine is it has a built-in locking foot and that's what this is. And because it was up, the fabric was kind of getting stuck in there. But by being down, it's doing its job, which is probably a good idea for all the players. But now it won't do that. Crisscross. Now when I get here, I'm not even going to um, tack it off, I'm just going to start rolling my edges. And because this is now the bias, it's stretchy. So you're going to want to roll it down. So as close to the edge as you can. And my machine's telling me I need a bottom, but I can see I'm good for a little bit. But that's why it's beeping at me. So that's what we're doing on all four sides. And there's my block. I'm gonna go through and make all my others, all 35 that I need, and then we'll start joining them. Now, one thing that you can do, I'm not doing on this, but if um, you wanted to, you could do a top stitch up here if this bothers you. I have been doing it when I get to the bigger blocks because this is a bigger um, seam allowance. And so tacking it down made sense. For this, it's so close, and this is like, it's a cover. It's not really even gonna be used. So I, I'm i happy with it like that. But this is the time where you would do that second stitch if you wanted it.
So I already went through the whole stack and I chain pieced all of my first stitch. So I did the whole thing. It was easy, just one at a time, zip, zip, zip. And now that I'm turning to go the other direction, I'm still chain piecing. And uh, in fact, this has been one continuous piece. <laughs> and so there's that cross. And then I turn it, snip that, I'm done with it. And then I can start rolling my edges. This is what worked for me to make all of these quickly. done with that. I'm going to stitch off of that onto my next. So here's my 35 of the blocks and I'm going to alternate every other one going gray and tan mixing up the patterns. I should have no more than two of each pattern in here. And so I went through my charm pack and I pulled out seven and there were a few in my charm pack that actually had three and so those are the ones I was going for and just to break it up a little bit. So I ended up with three gray and, nope, sorry, four gray, five gray, five gray and two tan. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this. These are for the border. These are those extra seven pieces because I have seven rows. This is what's gonna make up the difference on that and make up that cute border. So you were gonna cut these in half. Let's see, is this even a thing? This fabric's stiff. So yes, it is a thing. It's more of a thing when it's exact. All right, so it's a five inch charm square. So we're gonna cut it at the two and a half inch mark, mark, and did that. And then when I put these together, yeah, they're still the same. Sometimes one side ends up bigger because of how they cut these. Okay, so now we're gonna take these pieces. And these pieces. Okay, so now we're done. We have 35 of these. We have 14 of these. We have seven rows, so they're gonna get a half of a piece on each side with five blocks in between. We're gonna alternate. We're not gonna worry about these until later.
Maybe you're gonna need, let's sew the rows together and then we'll figure out the ends. Anyway, once you figure out what you want, um, then attach your side strips on. And then we're going to get a piece of backing and batting and, and insert our loops for the buttons and top quilt this. We're almost done. Now I'm going to press this flat. I was able to offset the seams as I was sewing. You definitely want to do that. And then we're going to measure so we know how big our backing is. I measured this. I have it folded in half. But I measured it and this is 36 tall. So it goes around the machine. And then 27 this way. Now we're going to measure the fabric for the backing and look at this cute fabric I'm going to use. I wasn't sure how I would ever use it and this is perfect. It gives us measurements for back quarters. Why not? So I'm going to put that on the inside. I'm going to measure a piece that's slightly bigger than that and then get some batting. And then I'm going to spray baste and then go to the machine and stitch in the ditch and quilt it. for some fun. So I spray basted the batting to the back of my front piece. Now I've got the back piece face down on the front piece because we are going to enclose the seam. But before I do that, I need to put the elastic or the rubber band in there for my button. And I'm gonna use a big button. I might not use one of these, or maybe I will, but um, a big button is what I have in mind. I'm also worried about that. I wish I had two of these and I don't. Maybe I'll just use black. Oh, okay. I think I'll just use black because I do have two of that. Oh wait, I wonder how this would look with it. Should I use brown or should I use black? I think I should use the brown or the tan. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. So we're going to Come up six inches, which is right here. Six. It's probably gonna bug me if it's off center because it's got lines in it. You see what I'm doing? I'm centering from here to here. So we're gonna take this, this part is gonna be in the seam. Okay, we're gonna need pins. Okay. And we only need it on one side. And I'm gonna put it on, on this side. And I marked it on both sides. So what's going to happen is this. We're going to put this here 
so that this is outside. And then when we stitch down, we're gonna go right on top of that and reinforce it. But then we have this loop sticking out. So I, I do want the loop to be close together. It's up to you how and what you want. This is probably, let's see. So now I'm going to stitch around this, but obviously I've got more backing and batting than I need. So I'm actually going to trim it down so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to go so a quarter inch around, although I want it to be a little deeper, but maybe a quarter inch. I'll just start with a quarter inch and, and maybe I'll go in a little bit more the second time around. Anyway, go all the way around, but leave a space so you can turn it inside out. Now the way I've got mine set up is this will be the front and this will be the back. So I think I'm going to leave the hole over here. And so I remember that, I'm gonna mark it. Okay, I have gone over, I've sewn around everything, and left good size opening. I'm gonna turn it inside out, and then you can do a top stitch. So I've gone around the edge, I went in a quarter inch, and then I didn't like it where my turn spot was, so I went around all the way uh, really close to the edge, which actually gives it like a, a double look, and I went all the way around so you wouldn't know where I turned it, because that's the reason why I didn't like it. Anyway, so now it suggests that you go to the very center and quilt it, and this is the center right here. Um, so I would, I'll probably stitch on both sides, but actually I want to continue stitching and stitch in the ditch. So I changed my foot to a bigger foot. I don't want my, like my quarter inch foot when I'm doing this because it has that little um, side mark. So I'm just going to go around and stitch in the ditch with this.
I'm done with this other than hand sewing the button on. So I have got the stitch in the ditch. One thing I did notice as I was trying to quilt this is because I didn't go around both sides of this because it's so small, my foot was trying to get caught, caught under this and some of my points are not really pretty and they would have done better with that second row of stitching. So live and learn. I'm going to be making more. I don't know if I'm going to do the um, cathedral glass window on the other um, quilt machine covers, but I will be doing it on other quilts. So that is that. Let's go look at it on the machine. Here's the machine. I plan to turn this that even matters. Anyway, this is the front that I've decided with the loops. This will be able to go over. I obviously want this in a different spot. But other than that, I should be able to work with what I have. See? Now, this will go around. I might put my button right here. And do the same on the other side. And I actually have a lot more room than I thought I would. I probably could have eliminated a row of blocks and only done four across so it's very roomy maybe well <laughs> it's bigger than i needed which is not that big of a problem right I don't know. It's like way too big on the other side. And do the same on the other side. And I actually have a lot more room than I thought I would. I probably could have eliminated a row of blocks and only done four across. So it's very roomy. Maybe. Well. <laughs> It's bigger than I needed, which is not that big of a problem, right? I don't know. It's like way too big on the other side. Oh, but this is the uh, the underside. It has this cute... Um, oh boy. This is what I did not want to have happen. All of this. I wonder if I were to fold this back. still too big. I have an extra row and an extra column that I don't need. So now that I've made this, it gives me an idea what to do with the others. This is it. Here's the back. The only thing that's missing is the button that will go right here on both sides so that when it's folded over, the button will hook right there. Just have to figure out what button I want to use because all I have right now are really bright colors which might work but this is too big for the machine i made it for but it seems to be the right size for my embroidery machine which is a sewing machine too but it's uh i call it embroidery and those two machines are the the one i just measured and the one i'm going to put this on are actually the same size of machines but i have them set up differently so this actually fits on that one who fit, go figure and the thing is is i want to cover my embroidery um, arm so I still don't have a cover for that and what I was thinking I would do is when I make whatever it is it'll have something for the embroidery arm so this came over and covered the machine then there's a section over here now I still have a bunch of this fabric and a little bit of the gray squares like seven squares and that's it. So I'm not gonna get very far, but I could do an every other one that might work, alternating between the gray and this on that to kind of, I don't know, I have to play with this. <laughs> it fits that one, but it's not the mental picture I had that was gonna be for that. So anyway, that's that though, this is fun. Um, it took a little longer than I thought because it's a lot of little um, cathedral 
window blocks and I'm still working on my technique with that. So I hope you guys enjoy this. The link for the free pattern will be in the description below. Again, that came from my girlfriend's quilt shop. So if you can or need anything, please stop by and visit their website. Or if you're here in person, they've got three locations in Utah. But that's it for me today. Thanks for being here. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and I'll see you soon.